let us uh, start lecture 2. And the subject of lecture 2 will be uh, same as subject uh, the lecture 1 is basically uh, or topic is uh, a recap on electrochemical polarization and we will consider two aspects activation and concentration polarization. Now, we have already seen that energy distribution across a double layer for an electrochemical reaction in the reversible situation m n plus plus n e m where i c i a i c equal to i a equal to i 0 when e equal to equilibrium equal to m and this is generalized condition E equal to E 0 when concentration of metal ion in the solution is 1. Otherwise, it will can have different other values depending on uh, Nernst equation what we have expressed in our previous lecture. Now, energy distribution wise we saw that they are on the same level and this is OHP n plus and this is m and we have an energy barrier equal to delta G star and for the thermally activated jump of metal ion as well as metal from one plane to another plane this is OHP and this is IHP is seeing the same barrier and that is what the, the rate of forward as well as backward reactions are similar or rather same. Now, we need to see what happens if there is any disturbance and this is equal this basically anodic reaction and this is cathodic reaction. Now, if there is any disturbance and disturbance I mean to say that by, by any chance if there is an excess flow of electron and this excess flow of electron would break that equilibrium, this equilibrium will be broken. Now, this excess flow of electron can be either a situation where electrons are supplied to the system and for example, in this reaction if more electron is supplied that means, this increases then of course, in order to balance that particular charge more metal ion would try to reduce. Similarly, if I take away electron from the system then this take away electron means metal has to send more electrons into that. So, how can it send? It can send by oxidation. So, if the charge flow into the system in the form of electron per unit time, per unit area, if that increases means what? Means I am increasing I c. So, that means electron supply per unit time 
per unit area increases. That means I C I am increasing. So, the value of I C increasing I am increasing. So, that means in other words I am sending negative currents into the system. Similarly, I A would increase if electron taken away per unit time per unit area. So, that increases then I A would increase that means, in this case in this case R f. So, this is R f this is R b R f increases in this case R b increases and that situation I would have change in this particular pattern particular energy distribution. Now, let us say I consider R b that is increasing if R b increasing increases that means, the rate of forward reaction is more than the rate of backward reaction. Sorry, in this case definitely the more rate of backward reaction is more than the rate of forward reaction. So, that means, this reaction is taking place faster than this. So, R b greater than R f and as per Arrhenius theory, if this rate is more than this that time delta g which is the activation barrier for the backward process must decrease as compared to the forward process. So, so backward process is nothing but anodic process I can mention uh, A here which indicates the free energy barrier for the backward process or the anodic process must be lower than delta G of C which is the forward process or cathodic process this is the activation energy felt by the metal ion for the jump from OHP to IHP. So, this is activation barrier again for metal ion going from OHP to IHP and in this case this is nothing but activation barrier for metal going to metal line or OHP this is IHP fine. So, that means, this particular activation energy should be lower than the activation energy felt by metal ion for its own jump from OHP to IHP. So, then energy distribution would be interestingly it will go up and then this should go down this should go down. Now, interestingly you see the activation energy felt by metal for the jump from IHP to OHP is this much. which is nothing but delta G A and what would be then activation energy felt by metal ion for its movement from OHP to IHP is this much. So, this is delta G C. So, that means, we could see that in this situation which is basically the colored line that case my the activation energy for the anodic process is more less than the activation energy for the cathodic process. So, that time I A is actually more than in this case I A is more than I C. 
Now, I will put a mod sign just to indicate that I am comparing the value, but still even at this condition I c is flowing opposite to I a. Now, there could be another situation where delta g c can be less than delta g a. So, that time I will see that I c would be greater than I a. And what will be my energy distribution? If I put it a different color, if I put it in a blue color, so that time this will go up, this will go up and this will go down, this side will go down. Fine. So, now when this situation or let me put it in blue color, So, that time the activation energy which is G A is this much for case 2, this is case 1 and activation energy which is felt by metal ion So, now interestingly you could see that the forward rate which is the cathodic reaction rate is more than the anodic reaction rate or the magnitude of I c is more than the magnitude of I a that can be possible if case 2 is satisfied. Similarly, I a can be more than the magnitude of I c for the case 1, this is case 1. Now, when we have such situation that case we will experience that the potential sips from this equilibrium potential fine. So, this equilibrium potential sipped, so that means whenever I have situation like A less than delta G C or I A greater than I C. On the other hand delta G C less than delta G A or I C greater than I A, those H cases I will have shift in potential which is other than E equilibrium and in this case we have considered E m plus m. Now, let us consider the case 2. So, in the case 2 I am, I am sending more electron into the system is not it because I am increasing the negative current or I c. So, if I send negative charge to a system its potential decreases. So, that means in this case potential decreases that means if I see that this potential goes after some current flow E potential goes to E 2 that time E 2 which is the final potential this is final minus E equilibrium should be negative. Now, when we take out for example, in case of case 1 I am taking out electrons that means, I am reducing the negative charge. In other way I can say that I am increasing the positive charge relatively that case m minus n e equal to m n plus that means, I am taking out this and so I am increasing this number. So, the positive charge increases, so the potential goes up. So, if I consider this potential goes to E 3, so E 3 which is final potential after some current flow minus E equilibrium should be positive. Now, 
this change this change from the equilibrium non corroding situation is taking place because of either the relative increase of negative current or cathodic current as compared to the positive current or the I A and vice versa like I A is increasing with reference to I C magnitude wise that time my potential shifts from the equilibrium non corroding situation which was corresponding to I 0 of the exchange current density. So, this particular phenomenon we call it polarization. And this polarization is taking place because of this electrochemical reaction, right. So, that is what we call it electrochemical polarization. Electrochemical polarization. Now, if we understand this electrochemical polarization is nothing but a shift in potential from the equilibrium value. And this shift in potential can be measured okay. and this is basically uh, due to the manifestation is basically the manifestation of current flow. So, this is nothing but shift in potential or this is a result of current flow and this measured this measurement of polarization is nothing but del E and del E here it is del E and here it is also del E fine and this del E which is basically measure of polarization we term it as nita or over voltage or over potential fine. So, now in this case over potential is negative and in case where anodic current density is more than cathodic current density over voltage is positive and just to indicate that whether it is a negative change or positive change we can also term it as cathodic because the cathodic polarization over voltage is negative and we can put a subscript A which indicates anodic. So, now we could see that the polarization can be expressed in the form of over voltage or nita and cathodic voltage equal to N C nita C anodic equal to nita A. Now, this nita A and nita C can have relation with the current density and in this case we can have a relation uh, and we have also proven it in our one in one of the lectures in corrosion part 1 you can go to that those lectures and find out the proof. But for our convenience we can also write down that particular expression final expression and the final expression we can mention in the form of an equation with that equation is called also uh, uh, called as Butler Volmer equation. So, the Butler Volmer equation which is the relation between I and over voltage. So, that can be written as I, I can mention I applied or I net equal to I 0 exponential alpha n f nita by R t 
minus exponential 1 minus alpha n f sorry there is a small change there is a minus sign 1 minus alpha n f nita by r t. So, this is the Butler Volmer equation for a situation where the concentration change at the interface is not there. So, that means we are considering only the thermally activated process that means metal is going to metal ion or metal ion is going to metal layer. So, that is basically in the activation side. So, we call it activation polarization activation polarization which is nita in terms of over voltage and that time I applied or I net can be expressed in the form of this equation. Now, interestingly we need to know all the terms fine. So, in this equation the terms are I let me write it again uh, equal to I 0 exponential alpha n f nita by r t minus exponential minus 1 minus alpha n f nita by r t. Here I 0 of course, is exchange current density n and f we have already explained. nita is over voltage and in this case activation alpha is nothing but symmetry factor symmetry factor we have to just understand what is alpha that is symmetry factor as well as over voltage now, if I consider the condition for case 1, this is the condition where I A is more than I C, that time this particular uh, line is this line is applicable, this line is applicable. Now, in that case, if nita to be my over voltage, this is in volt this can be converted into free energy with this expression n f nita this is delta g I am just considering delta g that is the value that is the change in value a change in that, that particular energy distribution. So, in the energy axis this particular distance this particular distance that means, difference between this and this is nothing but n f nita and if I give notation a b and c this point is c. So, alpha is nothing but a b divided by a c. Hence, the change in free energy for the anodic side is this much, this much which can be given as alpha n f nita and change in cathodic side which is nothing but this much or same as this value is nothing but 1 minus alpha this. So, now we understand 
that symmetry factor is nothing but the contribution of the total over voltage towards the change in free energy on the IHP as well as OHP. And in this case on the IHP the change is alpha nf nita and on the cathodic side is 1 minus alpha nf nita. Now coming back to this, so this is my expression. Now what is I net? I net is nothing but I A minus I C or I C minus I A. Now, this case delta G A less than delta G C or I A greater than I C and in this case delta G C less than delta G delta G A or I C greater than I A. So, now whenever we have whenever we have this forward reaction more than the rate of forward reaction uh, is more than the rate of backward reaction. So, this is R f this is R b that time this situation will prevail you go back and then see those energy distribution. So, uh, that time in the system there will be net current and this net current is nothing but the difference between these two currents. Why? because these two currents flows in opposite direction. So, this is I c, this is I a in case of I 0 these two are same length, but whenever I have I c more that time I a should be this one. So, that case there will be net flow of current I net which is nothing but this and if I c is less I a is more that time I net will be there which is nothing but this. So, that is expressed in this form. Now, we can separately write I c which is nothing but I 0 exponential minus 1 minus alpha n f nita by R t and I c I a equal to I 0 exponential alpha n f nita by R t and I net you can see this, this is I net or I applied which is the net flow of current into the system. Now, interesting part is these two equations, these two equations leads us to uh, one interesting equation. For example, if I consider I a equal to I 0 exponential alpha n f nita by r t if we convert it into log scale. So, that time I can write nita equal to r t alpha n f ln i a by i 0 I can write this and where similarly I can write i c equal to i 0 exponential minus 1 minus alpha n f nita by r t which goes to nita equal to r t alpha 1 minus alpha n f ln i c by i 0. So, these two equations are very critical for our next few classes. So, let me stop here we will continue our lecture on these two equations in our subsequent uh, uh, lectures. We continue our discussion on these two equations in our subsequent lectures. So, thank you very much. We will continue our discussion in later lectures.